Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to board game Red Dragon. We have a 2v2 for you guys today. I do tend to favor the team games, I know, but that's just because, well, I enjoy playing them, I enjoy having good teammates at my back, and I enjoy the sort of dynamics where if one person starts to win, even on my own team, it gets to be a bit of a difficult and tricky situation. You have to sort of coordinate, play symmetrically, and all that. But what we have for you guys today is a very fun one. Indeed, I'm piloting a Dutch deck that I've been trying out recently just because I do so very much enjoy the amount of fire support that they have available. So the MX-13 FL-12s, of course, with their 13 round a minute guns, it's really kind of crazy how many how many shells you can put forward really quickly. But we'll have to see how effective that is. So KT is headed over toward Golf, the KT referring to uh, my opponent, I guess, not the KT itself. And we have a huge column coming down on this side from the boot shock, and it was definitely a point where I was regretting not having ATGMs available in the Dutch deck. Of course, Dutch German does have this, it's part of why it's a more balanced deck, but I have lots of FL-12s. I have a double stack of Leopard 1-5s, and I have some infantry that are meant to just go for their Nathra, that are meant to sort of go forward and screen BMPTs, BTRDs, and a double stack of T-64Bs for boot shock are going to be some very, very tough um, I guess enemy vehicles and tanks to chew through. So, what's interesting here is that we're getting lots of good fire out, but my tanks are targeting the VDVs, which, I mean, that is nice. They're expensive infantry, but it means that the BMPT is getting away with it. It means that our, those T-64Bs are shooting in without really taking much fire back. And that's starting to overwhelm this just as a MiG-29 comes in. So, of course, those 500 kilogram bombs cluster, perfect for tanks and an expensive buy. But I see it coming in, I pull back just a little bit, and we do manage to take down the, the bomber there, so that was a very nice shot from a double stack of Hawk Heoses. I've been starting with these guys more often on team games than I used to. They are not the most accurate things in the world, but they're non-radar. You can definitely catch people, well, you can catch people out relatively easily with them if you try. So, my opponent Buchok is pushing in again. My Nathra are running dry, my Leopard 1-5s are panicked, everything is panicked after that bombing run, and the 284 NL was in the wrong position. I needed to get him over here and shooting, but I didn't quite manage it, and down goes the uh, radar. So, well not radar, I guess recon. But uh, on the left-hand side, Heinz is doing relatively well. Chumat fending off a triple stack of T-72s, and that's not going to be a winning situation for very long, but Rovi 90 proving to be very resilient, and the Merkava 2As behind them are enough to overcome those Zellers Ninchi. Of course, they do carry frag launchers, which are devastating against infantry in the open. So, I mean, we're on the defensive quite a bit. We have a hold in Bravo. We actually had a relatively funny situation over on the right as well, where my core mariners were taken out. I didn't even see this happen. I was so focused on getting reinforcements out, microing things here, making sure that I could avoid these bombers as another one comes in. The same type of bomber, I think. Yeah, 29M. And two shots, two misses from the MiG, as well as an attempt at infiltra infiltration from KT. So Natra and the AMX Prees have to stop that before we get into, uh, well, before they get into our back line. But the only things alive here are Leopard Verkenning and a 2A4 NL, so I'm pulling back as best I can as Heinz is securing a bridgehead. Well, I guess he's securing these woods on the right side of golf, which are crucial, absolutely crucial to defending this side of the field. If you lose that, it's just. It's a very, very tough game. Even if you're fighting over on the left-hand side, it's a lot better than fighting over these woods. So, uh, we do have an engagement here. Natra are not going to be enough to hold these guys back. I've lost the Verkenning as well, which it's always a sign of when you're going to start losing is when you start losing your recon tanks. It's true for Baltic Front as well, I mean Finland, um, as well as for the Dutch Verkenning. But my own Block 5 is coming in, and we get pretty good contact with some VDV. Scratchit was killed, VDV nearly killed, stunned, panicked, and all that, and also some nice... Mortar fire support in from the M106A1. Now, Amex Priest eat a couple of rocket pods, but I'm actually okay with that. These guys, they have, I think, four volleys in those KA-29s. Yeah, four volleys of 20 rockets. And the Amex Priest can eat that on their frontal armor and have no problem. You can see KT on the Red 4 side has pulled back the surviving T-72s, trying to get out of there as Rovai do close that window on the left-hand side of Fox, right-hand side of Golf. And we have a couple of Afghanzis that have chewed through my Natra decently well. And all I have here, I mean, that's Huza Ren, Mornantra, and a couple of Stute Trippin 95 that are too far back. I wanted them in reserve. I wanted sort of this engagement to go poorly and cheaply at first while I could sort of get a handle on what was going on here, get some reinforcements out and YPRs. Great on uh, auto cannon transports, by the way. Two frontal armor isn't crazy good, but for 15 points, it's a decent auto cannon vehicle and one of the few offensive uh, armored vehicles that the Dutch can bring to bear. So, huge push from KT over here, really clumped up. 
lots of uh, M60Ps, but that's sort of what that deck is designed to do. And the Suit Trippin have engaged, chewing through Monostrelki with those Minimis. I'm also moving up Natra just to make sure that when my enemy brings his stuff out of the woods, the first thing they see are those cheap Natra, and that's what gets shot. Amex Pre is proving that frontal armor is amazing, and we down go the Afghanzi. So, with this relatively under control, with the Core Mariners on that side actually getting a kill on a BTR, then moving along on that way, I was trying to move the YPRs up aggressively. I thought, you know, I bombed this twice. I thought we had a pretty good situation here, but unfortunately there's a BMPT that I was not able to take out. So, we're going to be turning around and just hoping to evade that line of sight again. As Zalwish Nietzsche, this really kind of surprised me. These Merkava 2As use more frag rounds than anything I've ever seen before off of one of them. I mean, if you're looking at the number right now, it's 738 out of 768, which isn't that many until you realize they drained a fob. And, you know, they don't carry all that all that many rounds in their primary cannons either. Well, I guess not cannons, but turrets. So we did have a bit of sneaky play here. Heinz is able to get SAS around the back end of this map, so they're headed up toward Delta. Uh, Stinger's off, which I'm not sure I agree with, but Core Mariner's running into VDV on my side, and that's what I'm looking at, not those SAS, as this continues on. So, uh, unfortunately taken out, but we took a big chunk out of the VDV for only having one man left. Quite a hero of the Dutch people there, defending them against all of this Soviet and, I suppose, Czechoslovakian, Yugoslavian, I guess probably Entente aggression on that side. Proletary uh, does mean Yugoslavia, but uh, the tanks weren't, so I just want to double check. The RDM-3 up on the high ground, and I mean, yeah, that auto cannon is not fun at close range. Kinetic rounds, of course, do more damage at uh, decreased different distances. Block 5 coming in again, but I've been a little over aggressive, and there is revenge now out of that 29M. We do get a couple of shots off, looks like. Second volley, not able to get on the way. Yeah, evac ordered, and just flying directly back does save that plane. So, suit troopmen have moved up. We've gotten a hold here of the situation with help from Heinz and his Fusilier's 90 as well as their FV-432s. So at this point, I'm trying to make sure that we can clear out some of the woods farther on in Bravo, because capping that side is definitely something that people like to do to make this a contested zone. So, in the meantime, Fox is still very loosely held. Both sides, actually, if you're looking at the replay on neutral right now, you'd see both sides were really not holding Fox very much at all. There was a lot of fighting going on isolated on the flanks. But BRDM-3 does get past my Natra, and I had to apologize to my ally for the shots on his Chaparral, but the Merkavas and the Leopard 2A4 are able to clean that up. Will my AMX Pre's come up here, and I'm trying to get some infantry over this way as two Troopin and more AMX's. Three of these guys, I mean, as I said, this was a deck test. It was um, designed to see the capabilities of that Dutch fire support on its own with most availability I can get, and I mean, this is pretty expensive, right? That's going to be, what, 70 points plus 35 again, it's 105 points total, but Look at the rate of fire there against the VDV, and not everything was shooting. Only one or two, I think, were shooting. And then when we take a couple of shots, the immediate return fire there, look at that. Second volley, we're not, I mean, we're doing one point of damage or two points of damage per hit, but we didn't really need more. And that's another kill for the uh, AMXs, I think on a BMPT even. Stute Troopin are getting engaged by BMD2s, and this is a little bit unfortunate. They're very expensive infantry, and groups of three is a little bit too many. They're going to have a hard time hiding, and you can definitely see that as I make a mistake here. And instead of pulling them back through the woods, I try and cross one more time, which does get another group killed. As Zealous Ninchi are taken out on the high ground, and now Stu Trippin moving over to help support Heinz and make up for his earlier support on the right side in Bravo. I actually capped with an Oxidary Pakuda as well, so I was sitting there going, man, that's... That's a lot of investment trying to help me shore up my side. Maybe I should do something to return the favor. We'll see more of that as the game goes on, but Golf is a very tough fight. Commandos Para are wonderful, wonderful infantry. 20 points of combat effect in this. Elrax are very nice. AA-52 is okay, I think. But the primary weapon is at least pretty pretty good, and the open ground versus in-town advantage, plus that shock training on the Commandos Para is more than enough to kill the Zealous Nietzsche before they get in. So, Amex Prees trying to lead the way here. Losing the woods did make me a little bit nervous. That's another part of why the Stute Trooping went over. Quad stack of BBPs is very, very threatening. So, a bow snab going up, and I was trying to get some cheeky rocket pods away here, but a Skrejit from Buchak and some AA in the back does ward that off, so no luck in that regard. But, Stute Trooping moving forward, and we did have a brief engagement just now. You can see the smoking wreckage of a couple of vehicles and some dead bodies scattered around there. As the Stute Trooping pushed forward, I'm trying to deny my opponent reinforcements to that side of the field. And this is where I have a really interesting idea. My Nantra are here, 
and they don't have guns or any sort of weapon good enough to take out the BMP-1Ds, but the AMXs do, so yeah, this, the seeds of a good idea are being planted right now as the AMX does unfortunately die, but the Leopard is getting some good shots there, and Stu Trippin engaging, supported by the FE-432s, should be able to take care of most of this, but I mean, VDB are a tough opponent, even with some pretty brutal fire support. Looks like that last vehicle is killed and the VDB stun should be taken out, but I mean, barely. The suit trippin should probably retreat at this point. We did also have Motostroke 90, a triple stack of them, moving forward into the woods here, right into a Leopard 2A4 now, and that's not any sort of anti-tank that I want in that Leopard 2A4's face. So 24 AP power is enough to do a lot, even at uh, a single instance of shooting off of that triple stack. So yeah, a little scary. Amex Prees and Fusiliers over on Heinz's side of the field doing decently well. But that MiG-29M that got an earlier kill on us is coming back in, using those bombs, showing off the uh, true, true strength of multi-role fighters there as, look at that, one, two, three, four, five missiles on the way, and he still gets out. Just very upsetting. Suit Trippin are moving forward, and I had hoped maybe I'd be able to ambush the side of some columns from KT, but for right now, at least, we are able to secure these woods, and Heinz is moving up on the left-hand side as well, securing that side of the field to make sure that we can get a decent hold on the town and on the trees on this side, which is a prerequisite for capping golf. So as it stands, we are taking out a plus one. Things are relatively even, 46 points to 34, and that is going to be a really contentious game moving forward. Proletary 90 getting through the trees here and getting out into the open ground where they're engaged by Fusiliers, but the Proletary are calm, the Fusiliers are panicked, and you can see the difference in their accuracy. 16, 19-ish percent accuracy, and without the Stute Troop in there, that would have been pretty deadly pretty quickly, even though we do start to take a little bit of tank fire at that point. And I do have an M109A5NL. This is the Dutch 7HE, 10 second aim time artillery piece. Very, very deadly as well as a couple of Nekaf 106s that are engaging the Monostrelki. Not the best choice here, and I know that. We did actually most of the damage with, uh, I think, with the Mortar as they came in, just because you know, shooting in Mortars at open ground infantry is going to be very devastating. But we are able to get the kills here at last as the Amexes and Nekaf do move in. So losing a single 10-point recoilless rifle jeep, I think that was fine for that. I really didn't care all that much. And this is the other strength of the Dutch deck that I was trying out, is just... I can throw trash units forward and support them with something with an actual gun, and we're going to do reasonably well. Not crazy, but reasonably well. These guys were just there as sort of base defense type things around Bravo, trying to make sure that nothing else sneaky was going on, and they should be splitting up and uh, spreading through those woods relatively soon. T-72s are marked, Golf is capped, the Red 4 team, and that's going to stop our plus one ticking, so, uh, well, yeah, that should. 66 to 34, and there's definitely a lot of surprising stuff. I mean, quad stack of Zealot Nietzsche, he's doing the same thing I am with, with Militia, is all it is. 10 point Militia leading the way, and then fire support vehicles engaging. But when Rova E90, renowned for not necessarily being very good infantry, are able to uh, continue fighting for that long, it's, it's kind of an interesting situation. I think this guy really liked T72 M1Ms though. <laughs> 90 point tanks, 15 frontal armor, the only thing I don't like about them honestly is the rate of fire. 8 rounds a minute, and the sphere ATGMs are wonderful, look at that, 22 AP power, 50% accuracy, can't really ask for better off of that sort of price and performance of tank otherwise, it's very nice, but uh, they do have drawbacks, and we're actually pounding in at those 272s with the NL, they were there a little bit too long. Cap on Fox though, and we have to get a move on, we have to keep recovering in this game as we we were pushed back at the start, we've gotten into the middle ground now, and we have to just keep moving. And this is what I said earlier about that idea when the Natra were there. Triple stack of MX-13s, this time trying to stay out of the direct line of fire and use their guns at a flanking position onto the edge of Charlie. My intention was to, as it ever is, wedge into this side of Charlie and attack that two-point zone. I've not been able to do it yet. I mean... By the time I'm that far in, people would usually surrender, so it's something that I, I haven't really been able to achieve my satisfaction. It really needs to happen in the opener, if it's going to happen at all, and I just... It's not a strategy I would recommend. It's one that has lost me a couple of games, um, and when the win comes, it's usually because of either help from an ally like Heinz, or things going well in other locations, right? So you get a good engagement here in Fox, good here there in Golf, and then you push in afterward, which is definitely what we're doing at this point. We got pushed back on this side early on, we've now gotten a couple of valuable kills, and the Leopard 2A4 tag team now is going to be a decent anchor. 
145 points each, these guys do perform, I think, reasonably well. 19 frontal armor could be thicker for the price. The 21 AP power is very nice, 65% accuracy is nothing to complain about. I mean, there's also a 60% stabilizer. I rarely use it with tanks, and the reason why is I've had so many tanks drive past things and present side armor when they should have just stopped and shot, and it's a rough feeling. So I was getting a little bit cheeky here, an F-84F, but I was trying to light up that infantry with just cheap rocket plane, but uh, yeah, that was, that was a mistake. I was just, you know, sometimes it's not about cost effectiveness, sometimes it's about sending a message, and that rocket plane was just there to send a message. But we are keeping a constant supply to the Hakios, we're also trying to heal up the 11-2A4s and get a little bit better anti-air forward, so these guys much as I do like them because they're non-radar, they're pretty expensive, especially for their performance and defense against helicopters, which is really nothing exceptional. 26-25, you can get much better for the cost. So actually the 60-pointer that I just called out, the Hawk Pip 2, this is of course your, well, 70-point I guess, standard radar version of the Hawk Pip, 33-25 meter range. And these things, I used to hate them, now they're growing on me. I mean, the range is nice, if you micro the uh, radar pretty well, it's not too much of an issue. It just takes a little bit of effort and concentration remember that you have to do that. We have lost a couple of units here pushing forward, and BTRDs and BDB are the reason why. I was hoping to get an angle and not quite able to do it. These guys are a bit too far back, and you can see they're, they're really they're positioned to shoot in here as ambushers. I needed to push them up to engage with those infantry and BTRDs, but it's a little bit too late. Of course, I'm pushing up anyway, but it's a little bit too late for that to really be that effective. We do have a forward hold here that is very nice, and an auxiliary Picoud from Heinz is going to be countercapping in Gulf. With uh, combined with the countercap in Foxtrot, I mean, this guy was he was a command vehicle machine. This can look at that one, two, three, four, and I am capping uh, Alpha, but very lopsided for the priorities there. And he's still out fighting a captain, so I mean, pretty scary stuff there from Heinz. This game, I would not have wanted to uh, to be on the other team fighting against that man, I really never do, although we've had a fair number of interesting games. MI-24D moving forward, and this was a little bit scary, I mean the Flaitas aren't very accurate, but high enough volume of fire and just weakening tanks too, it can be very difficult to deal with. So I'm trying to bring up some better AA here, trying to deal with those MiGs, Block 5 bomber coming in, and I don't remember quite what I was shooting at, but I think it was something right in the edge of those woods preparing for an offensive. That unfortunately does lose the block 5, and we do get revenge, but sometimes it's a hollow thing. I was running out of bombers, and that was not a good idea. But MX-10RC from Heinz is able to spot some Pivonkas, and we'll be shooting in with that wonderful, wonderful gun of the MX-10RC. Of course, first shot is a swing and a miss, because it always is. I swear, whenever I'm in perfect ambush position, I miss and I get shot at, and it's, it's very much one way or the other. Um, no in the middle. So both Pivonkas there taking fire, looks like one kill finally from the 10 RC, and uh, Astute Troopman engaging with Spetsnaz Gru, apologies there, that was a bit of a noise. So T-55s, on f this this just killed me, 55 point tanks versus T-55As, 25 point tanks. And they got the kills, and this guy's still alive with a single point left, and my Astute Troopman gets shot by BMPT, and I was just sitting there going, dude, you're winning, but you could throw it all away with decisions like that, it really just do things properly. <laughs> So, you know, we'll, we'll get cheaper fire support vehicles and we'll, we'll clear them out with infantry. Like what you should do, I mean, it's difficult. If you try and go over, you'll get shot up by anything in, in the woods back here, so it's not like you can just go over the hill. But smoke before an offensive, get your units in without getting them shot up from positions they can't see, and you'll have a, a much better day than my tanks did just there. So, more mortar fire coming in, the last Pavlonka shooting, and the MX-10 RC not quite able to get him just then. But, in case you guys forgot, these things can spam. <laughs> so for 40 points, you get a 12 AP power gun, 3 frontal armor, really flipping fast, and 43 kilometers per hour amphibious, which is a huge, huge amphibious speed, gets the second kill on the Pavonka, and that's 200 points lost to a single AMX-10 RC. Now I am making a bit of a gambit for Charlie. We are about 20 minutes into the game, almost exactly. And I thought to myself, if there's a time to do it, it's now. Heinz is doing pretty well here, my Stu Troopin are still somehow alive and kicking and supporting this side of the field. Gewehrmann and uh, Proletary engaging, and this is interesting, the MG3 on the Gewehrmann is very nice, so they are just regular training against Proletary 90, but they still, I mean, 
yeah, really not able. I was I was expecting them to do a little bit better than that, but the Proletary have only taken it looks like two losses, and they've just mulched through a stack of good vermin. So we did mark the uh, enemy command vehicle there, spotted just for a split second by the Amex 10 RC, and my NL is already aiming. <laughs> It's a wonderful aim time on this thing, honestly. I, I used to use things like the, the 10 HE howitzers. Never got kills with them. But these guys, you can actually support your own infantry. You can do things like this. And there's a big counterattack coming in from KT. Just force marching proletary through. Overwhelming sheer force of numbers. Uh, the Stute Trooper and the remaining infantry on the right hand side. And he is on his way to retaking those woods. Except for a couple of commandos. 90. The uh, 2A5 NL shots are also coming in. So we'll have to see. How they do, first shot's swing and a miss, but a little bit of damage it looks like. You can often see vehicle damage. <coughs> Apologies. Uh, in this game, just from sort of like sparks that shoot out. But there it is, and Delta is decapped. Fox also uh, decapped just for a second. Here ends, my Amexes are moving over, the Leopard's moving over. Offensive failed a little bit on this side, just because I didn't have good enough recon. Nowhere near enough recon, so the Rekenning's coming out too late. Should have done that instead of the uh, double stack of FL-15s, honestly. <clears throat> but, you know, live and learn, and uh, most importantly, live, learn, and don't make the same mistakes twice. <clears throat> we do have some contact there. 2A4 takes the shot, takes out that uh, enemy vehicle, and just by... I mean, this is where I really needed the Rekenning forward to, uh, to spot, because there is an enemy CV back here. Foxtrot is still counter-capped. Not that many places it could be, and that's really what I'm looking for with Delta Decapped. Charlie's the only thing for the enemy team that's actively getting them any sort of points right now, and we are at a plus two for that, Delta and Golf contributing. But, uh, I don't know, this this could have gone a little bit better if I could just see, and the Hawk Pip will get range, and we also do spot and take out that command vehicle there, so the Hawk Pip... Ooh, I don't know. This thing moves so slowly, it's incredible, but one missile away, and swing and a miss, second missile... Might be able to get it. No, actually, taken out by the Cheetah Prandle in the closing second of this game is that is going to be just a little bit too much for our opponents. And when we take Fox and push in through Golf, that's going to be the surrender. So, well played to everybody all around. Some brutal, brutal kills and losses here. 44-10 to 29-90. Most of that in the latter part of the game as well, with the the cheeky infiltration kills and a couple of command vehicle kills there. So units that did well. The 2A4 NL that was alive pretty much the whole game. Um, did get some very nice kills. T64B, nothing really super high value here, but just consistent mid-range value adding up to way more than the price tag on that tank. Block 5 didn't really do all that great. I used him a little over aggressively and lost it because of it, but the Core Mariners did very well. Hawk Heos got a MIG. I mean, hey, that works for me. And Stute Troopin were devastating on the right-hand side of the map, taking out VDV and BTRs left, right, and center. Also, the I mean, the FL-15s, the ones that did well did very well, just that the ones that didn't very much didn't, and that was a hard thing to balance out. So overall, I'm not sure I love the deck, but it certainly does have its its role, its niche, and I think particularly on small maps, it has some potential. So that's what we've got for you guys today. Thank you all for hanging around, and uh, well, we'll see you again real soon.